We in the devil's house, a lion's den, pit full of snakes, trapped in no whirlwind. And as me world spin in hell's kitchen with hell's angels facing constant danger. Good day to you guys. And today we're going to jump right into it like always. And we're going to look at the lies that we've been told about the past. Right here we have a map made in 1587. David Rumsey Map Collection at Stanford University. A 10 foot square map. And it's one of the oldest maps that um, we have in existence. And we're going to take a look at this map and see what did they see 400 years ago when sailing across the globe. Now, one thing I want you to look at with this map is it shows the earth as being flat for all the flat earth conspiracy theorists. So when you look at this, here go more flat earth conspiracy theorists. And you see they have other land masses outside of the ice, but it's not like a globe. The ice around us inside of it where we cannot escape. Antarctica is not at the bottom. Now, the movie The Lord of the Rings, I always like to go to these fantasy movies because they seem like the only thing that's telling the truth. And if you notice, it's a journey in Middle Earth. And when you look at the picture, we are living in Middle Earth, which, which we call Africa, the Americas, Asia, etc. And the other land masses are on the outside of the ice ring. Y'all check the movie out if you've never seen it. So what does Middle Earth mean in Lord of the Rings? It's the human inhabited world that is the central continent of the Earth. So I get, I'm assuming the Earth is so large, we don't really know how long large the Earth is because we just live in Middle Earth. And um, the Hobbit and the Lord of the Rings are set entirely in Middle Earth. I told you about, you know, some of us are el elves, trolls, humans, etc. Now, one thing you want to see is this ice wall. This ice wall have us quarantined. So when they tell you about Antarctica and everything they're doing in Antarctica, they're making you think that Antarctica is south of the map when Antarctica is surrounding us, even on this old map that was made in the 1500s. It is not a globe that has Antarctica at the bottom of the map. When you look at the flat Earth map, Antarctica surround all continents and we are trapped in Antarctica. Now we just gonna take a glance at this map. I want y'all to study this map on your own. Also, I'm gonna just skim through it right here. We're looking at the um, part of America, South America, Brazil. And let's zoom out. Take some other looks. Peru. Um, we see the Caribbean islands. We see the America, North America, Florida. Now, one thing I really want to point out to you guys, do you see those red dots? Those red dots are castles or some kind of, kind of buildings built great light castles, some, some great architect. Now, you know, a lot of people saying on the mound build, the mounds of America, but on this map, it's showing maybe those are mountains or mounds. I don't know. But it's also showing that it should have castles all over America. And when we go um, scroll in, this is Mexico City. And they should have a great castle. Now, here is uh, John. I don't know how to pronounce his last name. But he was a Scottish translator and person or choreographer. And he published the first British Roll Atlas. He was also a successful translator noted for publishing his works in handsome illustrated editions. I want you to skip down to his books. America being the latest and most accurate description of the new world. So when he came to America, he came and he seen Montezuma. We see Montezuma as a melanated person. But we're not really focused on the skin complexion of the person. A picture speaks a thousand words. And when we look at the back of these pictures, we see great architect that was here in America. So these castles 
are also lining up with what John seen when he came to America. He seen great architect. Now there we see some giants and beasts, whatever, naked giants walking around. And a lot of people have theories that they had giants in the Americas during this time. And on his map, he is showing pictures of giants. Let's scroll some more. Keep looking. We're going to go to Africa next. Nigger, Niger. So, the coast where they say a bunch of us was taken from as far as African Americans. But if you look on the map, you also see a bunch of those red dots, which are castles. Where are the castles that's supposed to be in Africa? What happened? Why is none of these great architectural buildings still standing? They had to get tore down. Why are they not in the history books? The lies that we are living in. How deep do this rabbit holes go? Now, of course, you know about the castles in Europe because the so-called Europeans, a.k.a. white man, claimed that they the ones who built up Europe. So they kept the castles in Europe to make it like it's only a part of Europe. You look here in Granada, Spain, you see the castles, 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 but we know about castles in Europe. We just don't know about the castles that was around the rest of the part of the world because we wasn't taught that they was had castles in other parts of the world. You see Paris with its castle, but you know, I don't think they have any castles in Paris right now as we speak, or these great structures. And they have them all through Africa. If you look at this map on your own time, study the map, because it's, it's too much for me to go through on this video. I'm trying not to take up too much time and scroll through here. Now you see Cairo. You don't see the pyramids in Cairo. You see another great city like Mexico City. Now the map is the same as present day. And Cairo is over there and the pyramids are on. Cairo is on the right side of the Nile. And the pyramids are on the left side of the Nile. So this map is still the same as the maps of today. As far as... Uh, where the pyramids are located and where Cairo is located. But you see next to the pyramids, it is a bunch of castles that we no longer see in Africa. What happened to these castles and this great civilization around the world that once existed? You see Jerusalem, it has this great castle. Well, it's not Jerusalem then because the alphabet J didn't exist yet. So we know that this map could be true because it don't have Jerusalem, it have Jerusalem because J didn't exist during the making of this map. Here we go on, that's um, India and the Asia's. You see the red dots, a.k.a. the castles there also. So all over the globe, they had castles everywhere. So it seems as if cultures was connected or everybody was building great castles that no longer are spread across the globe. You may see some pyramids and other awesome um, structures that are still standing. But these castles like on this map is castle. You came in so many castles. You can almost lose count trying to count them all in China, Tokyo, the whole globe. Now, another thing I want to point out, Antarctica don't have no ice. Y'all notice that? Now, look at these beasts, the mermaid, which is why I go back to the movies, those fairy tales. Fairy tales seem like they telling real tales. What well, if fairy tales was fairy was real tales and real tales was fairy tales because that's what it's looking like and Antarctica have no ice during this time so where did the ice come from all of a sudden and they have these beasts and monsters of what we would call fantasy myths and legends but in the 1500s the guy who made this map is saying this is what they're seeing when they're traveling the world so who do we believe the people of today or the people of yesterday of what they seen on their accounts, their most accurate accounts, seeing mermaids, seeing 
I forgot what you call the half man, half horse, but you see him also in Antarctica. So now a question, what is really going on in Antarctica? Because they don't want us to go there and see. And it seemed like it's some, um, do y'all remember King Kong movie, The Lost Island, how they had all those prehistoric animals? Yeah, it seemed like that movie might be a little bit realer, but it might took place on Antarctica from what this map says. Tell me what y'all think. Leave your comments down below. Let's keep on scrolling. And if you look at this map, you just see all kind of monsters when it comes to Antarctica. And another thing about Antarctica, where you see the, um, the Red Cross. We know who that is if you looked at my last videos. But those are the um, Germans. Those are the Moors of Germany and the Wild Man of Germany who's selling the earth at the time. But one thing about, about Antarctica on this map, no red dots, no castles. We are not living there. That's the land of the wild beasts, monsters, and the fantasies that we hear about. Now, that looked like a lion killing an alligator to me, but could be some kind of other creature. I don't really know what kind of creature it's killing. Look at this bird. Look how huge the birds are. These prehistoric animals. Do you let me see that monster in the middle of the sea? A sea monster in the middle of the sea. What the hell is that? This is what they saying they are seeing. This is where all these fantasy movies and scary movies are getting their ideals from. Something happened back then. And look at this bird. It is so big. It is carrying an elephant. And we know an elephant is two tons, maybe even more. And it's carrying this elephant like it's just a little small chicken. So it looks like to me, we've been lied to in our past. On this map, we also have Matazuma. So... This, app, this map is still putting people who was ruling at that time is matching the timelines. So is the descriptions that they have on this map accurate also with these beasts and no ice on Antarctica? Let's zoom in at the top of the map. Notice right here. Um, I say me, my theory is just the Garden of Eden. Because if you notice, no red dots. No one living there. Just like God kicked them out the Garden of Eden. It has the four rivers. The four rivers running through. That's supplying the um, earth. That to me fit the description of the Garden of Eden. All the way in the middle of Middle Earth. Where no one resides because Adam and Eve was kicked out of the garden. And that land looked like nothing is there. Or no one went there to be able to tell what's there but they know it exists. Okay, here we have pictures of Chicago, 1893. Right, you see, what happened to these beautiful buildings? Buffalo, New York, 1901. What is beautiful architect now? San Francisco, 1915. St. Louis, Missouri, 1904. This looks like we are somewhere across the warm seas. This does not look like American, from what they told us about America, this does not look like the architect of America. But now it gets a little bit more sinister because now they have these photos popping up. Well, you have us living on top of these ancient cities. And you, some of these photos also have a bunch of mud um, around where they had some big mud flood or whatever. You see them digging up mud from around these buildings trying to get back to the bottom of the buildings. So some buildings you're looking at. We don't know how old these buildings really are. We cannot go by their history because everything they told us is a lie. Now I wanna to go to this great comet of 1811. It was visible to the naked eye for around 260 days. 260 days you was able to see this comet with your naked eye. Now the thing about this comet is that they never taught us in school, right? It caused a new manner of earthquakes. It was a series of intense earthquakes beginning with the initial earthquake of a 7.2 to 8.2 on December 16, 1811, followed by a magnitude 7.4 aftershock on the same day. Y'all can imagine the devastation, the calm chaos that was going on, the aftermath. The quakes caused extensive changes to the region. Uplifts, landslides, riverbanks collapsed were common. Trees was uprooted by the intense shakings. Others was drowned. So we see a lot of people died during this time. A lot of people died. Think of that. Was it really wars killing people? No, I think some of those wars are false stories. These people died from a natural disaster. Whatever that 
1811 comet did. It was the earthquakes were so big. They occurred in the central Mississippi Valley, but was felt in New York City, Boston, um, Montreal, and there was over 2,000 earthquakes. Over 2,000 earthquakes. Do you realize the devastation that will cause if we have 2,000 plus earthquakes going back to back, back to back? It was so bad the Mississippi River ran backwards. And here we have pictures of the aftermath. These pictures make more sense. You see, it don't have too many people because so many people died from it. But all you see is mud and, and landslides that's covering these ancient buildings that we've seen on the previous maps. Even when you look back then, they wasn't building. They was digging the mud from around the structures that was already built. Just like the map and the picture of Montezuma show that was written, drawn by John. You see more mud and more wagons pulling the mud, taking the mud away. They are uncovering. This is um somewhere overseas because this was a worldwide event. I don't know exact land. Maybe that's the Middle East. According to looking how they dress, that could be the Middle East. But you see, everything is covered in mud. The whole planet. 1860s, you see the picture, not that many people. 1880s, um, they still cleaning up. 1890s, everybody coming. Now, if you look at this slant, these buildings that we see slanting like this, it's made like this because the mud. They didn't get all the mud up. That's why now, you, if, if you ever wonder, why do they have bill, um, windows at the bottom of the floor when you walk in? It's because they didn't build it. They just didn't dig all the mud up. Look at um, Washington, D.C., this is what's under Washington, D.C. It's more building. They did not build. The story they tell us about Benjamin Banneker building it, nah, we have to go back and look at history because they had a worldwide mud flood that destroyed the earth. And this here is not an actual picture, but it can give you an idea of what's really under these great monuments we're seeing right now. We don't know how tall they are. Look in the 1900s. Um, where is this located? compared to 2017 I think that was Paris there's another picture giving you an example of what you send on top is not what the whole building literally looked like and here go more pictures of them picking up the mud picking up the dirt now peep this picture out you see the red slant it's gonna show you how the streets are made like that now as you see this they was picking up the mud from that now look at the street it's slanted down that's why you have windows um right there by your feet when you're walking down now because it was covered by the mud and you see this picture of montezuma again these are those same buildings that they're digging from the mud it was already here here go another um picture of um drawn by john and you look at the background more buildings here go america drawn by john again castles just like on the um, the map of the 1500s now we're just going to go around and look at how the old world looked and what happened to these magnificent buildings. Why they not still standing? And why, if they built that with a horse and wagon, why are we getting these ugly ass buildings that we're looking at right now? Why we can't build the great architect or the, the great structures that they had before this mud flood? Why they can't duplicate it since they claim they built it and everything been destroyed? If you look, everything destroyed. If you go look at the history, destroyed by fire. Destroyed by fire. No matter where you go at, everything had the same story. It was destroyed by fire. Goddamn, how many fires were they having back then? These have to be so many lies. Ready for the transition, right? Everybody about to move in. It's time for a cleanup. Here is Nathan Phillips. He was, um... He's remembered for being Toronto's first Jewish mayor. Yeah, of course, the Jews, right? And I'm going to let y'all read that. He pursued an aggressive agenda of demolishing heritage structures and throughout the city in order to modernize. Right. So basically, they got rid of it. They got rid of the history. And this is around 1873 when they started doing this. Demolished in 1959 as part of Nathan Phillips' campaign to destroy our European heritage buildings. I don't know about the European heritage part. That's bull. Buffalo, USA, before. Look at the buildings. Now look at Buffalo Square buildings. 
Look at Canada, 1888. Magnificent structures. Whoever created these was master carpenters. Why are we not building buildings like this anymore? Baltimore, 1880. And why would they destroy this? Why, Boston, look like you're in Paris, right? What are they really covering up? What is the real history? The real history is they had a major disaster, 1811, when that comet hit and caused the Mississippi River to run backwards. And it was a worldwide event that reshaped the whole history of the world. And after the aftermath, after all the deaths, we see the so-called Jewish people was the ones who were, um, was able to take advantage of the situation, reclaim a lot of these places as they own, and rewrite the history of what really happened. Good thing we have these photos to show us that what they've been teaching us in school is BS. You have to think, look in New Orleans, 1900. These buildings don't exist. No people really um, living there at the moment. Like, it's not a big major city, but they have these gigantic structures with very few people living. New York, USA, 1890. A whole street of magnificent mansions. They called it the Gilded Age, as if um, they say a bunch of millionaires was building those mansions in the late 1800s. Lies, the lies. And then they built these structures just to tear them down. Like, who does that? You must question everything because most of the um, things we was taught in school is just straight BS. They don't want us to know what was really going on and how great the world was as a whole. Not just our people, but as a whole because... And on that map, you see they had these great buildings worldwide. Worldwide, they had castles and other great architect that's no longer standing. Y'all tell me what you think.